You're listening to the WTA Insider Podcast. Ready? Play. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the WTA Insider Podcast. I am Courtney Nguyen, senior writer for WTA Insider at WTATennis.com, and I'll be your host on this podcast, where we take you closer to the players and all the action on the WTA Tour. On this episode of the podcast, I'm coming to you from the Foro Italico, where the Internazionale Biennale d'Italia is already underway here in Rome. But before we get to the happenings this week, you'll hear from Mutua Madrid Open champion Simona Halep in our Champions Corner. Halep came through to win her biggest title since Indian Wells last year, rolling through the field in Madrid to win her 12th title. And I'm also happy to be joined in conversation by Czech veteran and fan favorite Barbara Stritseva, who talks about her on-court volatility, her six-month doping ban back in 2012, and why she chose tennis over figure skating. Yes, figure skating. But first... I just want to go uh, on court like today, relaxed and uh, playing my game. Do you feel like you're under the radar a little bit more this year that maybe the spotlight no is one no one cares about me now <laughs> <laughs> only Mr. T. We, we, we care we care Simona we always care play. we always care uh, yeah uh, I care about myself so it's okay. <laughs> on our preview episode before Madrid German tennis writer Rene Denfeld said he was most curious to see what Simona Halep would do after an incredibly disappointing early exit from Stuttgart two weeks earlier after injury and illness hampered her 2016 preparation, Halep looked to be back on the right path during the North American spring, making back-to-back quarterfinals in Indian Wells and Miami. But that Stuttgart loss to Laura Siegemund on a surface she loves was curious and alarming. Did it derail all that positive energy she gained in the spring? Nope, not even close. Halep lost just one set all week in Madrid, scoring wins over Misaki Doi, Karen Knapp, Tamea Baczynski, Sam Stozer, and Dominika Sabolkova to win her first title of the year. The win moves her back into the top five at number five, and she vaults 23 spots up the rankings in the road to Singapore to land at number six. For a woman who never misses an opportunity to profess her love of the WTA finals, that's a pretty big deal. I sat down with Simona after her win to talk about her surprising week in Madrid. She arrived in the Spanish capital early and wanting nothing more than match play, and she walked away with a load of confidence and the trophy. Simona Halep, congratulations. And a big title for you and a, and a very big week. But when I sat down to talk to you before the tournament about a week ago, you were very hesitant to kind of talk about what your chances were this week. Yeah, uh, thanks. Um... Yeah, it's amazing that I could win this uh, tournament. Um, actually, I feel it. I feel that I had everything in my hands. Every match, I uh, felt that I played my best tennis every match, and um, kind of deserving the title because um, I won it. I didn't receive like a present during the matches. I just um, believed that I have the chance. Uh, after, after day by day, I believed more that I have the chance to win it. Uh, at the beginning of the tournament, it's normal to f- to be to feel that you hesitate a little bit because mm. it's just the start and it's uh, you don't know actually what is going to happen in the first round because the first round is always uh, the toughest mm-hmm. in the tournaments. And uh, after my uh, uh, months before coming here, it uh, was tough to believe that I can win it. Yeah, you said you know throughout the week that you were under the radar, people didn't care about you anymore, your ranking was slipping, things like that. And then to put together not just a r- title-winning run, but to do it the way that you did, the score lines were, were very much uh, on your side, aside from that yeah, one set. Yeah, that's why I say that uh, I feel that I won the tournament. I played an amazing tennis every day, and uh, day by day I played better tennis. In the final I played very well. Uh, she played as well, um, good tennis. Uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, looked like it was <laughs> you easy. You made it easy, yeah. You made yeah, it look very I made easy. It, yeah, I made it easy, and um, you know, I f- now I don't feel tired. So that means that I was relaxed. Mm. I was uh, just um, with my mind to play tennis, not about the result or something else. Just um, enjoying and uh, showing what I have practiced. Yeah, I mean, that's what you said at the start of the tournament was that you just wanted matches. Yeah, I just wanted to trophy. win matches. Yeah. Yeah. So um, did that at some point change? 
throughout the week, no. that mentality? No, it was uh, permanent in my uh, mind, in my heart, in uh, my hands, in my body. Mm -hmm. I felt that I just uh, want to go on court to win the match. Nothing else. Uh, today actually was different because uh, I played for the trophy. Yeah. I had emotions before, but uh, I knew how to manage them. I have experience playing here the final, so yeah, made it, uh, that final in 2014 made uh, today easier. What do you mean in terms of that, like uh, that final against Maria? Obviously, a tough match, but how did that prepare you for today? Um, I felt that um, I can lose it uh, because I lost it once uh, and uh, nothing happened after. <laughs> the, uh, the sun still came up yeah. and the world kept <laughs> yeah, going. And yeah. uh, now uh, I just said that I have to be different than uh, that day because uh, that day I uh, couldn't um, be relaxed because I was very with a lot of pressure that I have to win it. Mm -hmm. Now I said that uh, the match is open and I have just to go to play my best which I did, and I think I did it pretty well, and I, pre I did it uh, pretty relaxed. What was the key this week to staying relaxed? Because that's a word that comes up a lot with you in terms of you play your best tennis when you are relaxed. What Do you have a key now to kind of... No, it's no? not a, It's not about the key. It's just uh, about how uh, I see the things. So I, I was not thinking about the result at all. Um, even if I played the final today, I didn't care if I win or lose. Mm. I just wanted to go on court and to win the match. The specific that the match not the the th the fact that is the final right like not the title not yeah. uh, the bigger just thing the but match. just the match you and Darren arrived to Madrid fairly early is that Tuesday right? Tuesday okay normally you don't get that luxury you know a lot of times tournaments are back to back you're arriving a bit late kind of like you know from Indian Wells to Miami or yeah. Fed Cup to Stuttgart whatever it is how much of an impact do you think that had on what you were able to do this week having that extra almost five six days to train yeah I had uh, many days training with Darren I wanted that and I asked him actually when he made the the schedule in January mm -hmm. that I want this week to to prepare with him here in Madrid so I knew what I want to do um, it's much better to come a few days earlier you feel the courts you feel the atmosphere of the tournament and you feel like uh, you are into it already when the tournament starts so made me like made uh, the thing easier and uh, made me feel that uh, I am already here since long time ago. So yeah. that's why I felt very well uh, straight uh, in the first match. Both Indian Wells and Madrid, your two biggest titles. Both tournaments are kind of similar because of the conditions. In terms, of the ball can fly a yep. little bit. Do you? see that there's a connection there at all or is it just the two tournaments you happen to win I I don't know maybe like, do you like those conditions like I like yeah do? I like okay. a lot uh, in uh, Indian Wells I played semis once yeah. once I won so I played uh, always good tennis there because uh, a lot of people have problems controlling the ball but when it's like when the ball flies yeah yeah I understand the altitude a little bit here as well mm, no doesn't bother me uh, mm. I like uh, these conditions and um, you know, I felt well. Everything <laughs> went well. No kidding. How much are you aware of kind of how big of a story this week was back home in Romania, not just you, but also your, the three other Romanians that made it through as well? I don't know. I didn't read anything <laughs> since long time ago, and mm. I'm not going to start to read again. <laughs> um, I heard that uh, tough story about my uh, joke with uh, Easter <laughs> present. Uh, yeah. With the second set, they it make a uh, joke. <laughs> yeah, they make uh, everything negative, so I'm not going to read. Uh, but I, um, in my opinion, it's a big thing that uh, many Romanians are playing in the last matches here in this tournament, also doubles. Mm -hmm. So it's a good point for our country and uh, maybe will help uh, our juniors. Yeah. So what do you do now to celebrate? How do you kind of allow yourself to... I don't know. <laughs> you have no idea yet? <laughs> I have no idea, Are yeah. you going to take one of the beers back that you gave to us? Have <laughs> no, I don't like beer. <laughs> I don't like beer. Maybe I will drink something else, but I don't know what. Uh, first, I have just to calm down a little bit mm. because I'm really excited. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe we'll go in the city somewhere to celebrate. Much deserved. Well, it was a very good week, Simona. Congratulations. Thank you very much. See you in Rome. See you in Rome. <laughs> yeah. Before we leave Madrid for Rome, I'm pleased